Okay, so um, I've enumerated here the steps in the idea that really genes uh, had basically for trying to describe the spectral distribution of the black body radiation uh, through their logic using classical arguments. So let's take these one at a time, and I've numbered these now just so we can follow along. Okay, so the first step is to count the number of modes inside a cavity. And just to sort of um, start this off and get off, get everybody on the same page, let's remember what happens in, for a one-dimensional standing wave, okay? And then we'll generalize that to three dimensions. So for a one-dimensional standing wave, okay, then you, the electric field is described by, the extra field amplitude is described by um, some prefactor, some amplitude, times uh, the sine of 2 pi x over, over lambda. So this is a one-dimensional um, box, basically, of uh, and along the x direction. So the wave is described as the product of two sine waves, one that varies in space and one that varies in time, okay? 2 pi x over lambda, 2 pi ft, okay? And then, basically, uh, this quantity 2 pi over lambda is something which we call the wave vector, or the wave number, okay? k, and 2 pi f is just the angular frequency, okay, omega, and so we can just rewrite this very simply as e naught sine kx sine omega t. So this is the typical, this is the typical um, form of a standing wave. You get a spatial part, so it varies in space, and then that pattern vary, basically varies in time with angular frequency omega. Okay, so, okay, so, uh, if we consider a box of length a, okay, as I've drawn over here, then the lowest frequency is just uh, corresponds to wavelength of two times the box. So the so the um, which is this mode right here, okay? Because again, it's it's full wave something like that, okay? So two times a. Um, the second the second mode, okay, would be something like that, okay, where the wavelength is equal to a, or uh, the 2a over 2, okay, and so on. So the, the third, the, the next mode, the third mode is equal to 2a over 3, and the fourth mode is equal to 2a over 4. So you see the pattern, okay. So if you, if you, um, um, uh, basically the, the enumerated values of k which correspond to these different modes, okay, k sub n, is equal to 2 pi, okay, times uh, n over 2a, where n is just an integer, okay, and that basically just follows directly from this. And now if we multiply by c, then we get, um, if we multiply these uh, k values, these possible k values, oops, sorry, by the speed of light, uh, huh? Come on. Okay. Then we get that the uh, possible values of the angular frequency are just equal to two pi uh, n times c divided by two a. Okay. And this basically just follows from the fact that that a wave will move one wavelength in one period. Okay. And so, um, and so uh, it moves at speed c. So if you divide the wavelength divided by the speed, you get the period. And if you invert that, then you get the speed divided by the wavelength is equal to the frequency. Okay, so that's basically where the relationship between k and omega comes from. Okay, so these these indexed uh, wave number values, k sub n, and uh, angular frequency values, omega n, basically tell you what possible waves will fit, what possible standing waves will fit into a box of length a when the sides of the box are metal and therefore when uh, physics dictates uh, that the electromagnetic field is zero at the ends of the box, okay, at the edges, okay, the sides. and um, and so, in principle, for this one-dimensional box, we could just count up all the number of possible modes in a particular frequency range.